close-kept secrets. The Blue Foxes defeat General Osmaldo at Tagaria, delivering a blow to the Imperial front line. Seizing their opportunity, the Alitanian forces pour forward into the base, striking the Imperial troops as they reel from the previous attack. The Imperial forces crumple in disarray and are forced to retreat across the sea. And so, after six long months of occupation, Tagaria is reclaimed by the kingdom. Word of this great victory spreads throughout Diofield, along with rousing tales of the heroic Blue Foxes. Frederick, Walter Quinn, Iscarion, and Andreas all receive accolades from the royal government. And the Blue Foxes are promoted from mere mercenaries to Knights of the Lord's Council. Their triumphant return is celebrated lavishly, with glasses being raised all over Central Field, voices echoing their names across the land. Two months have passed, and with the Empire repelled, the political squabbling amongst members of the Lord's Council resumes. The question of royal succession, little discussed upon the death of Prince Ivangar, surfaces again, and tension between the factions increases by the day. Lord Councillor Kimball is in favor of the second-born, Victor Shatham, while Lord Councillor Joshua has thrown his weight behind the third-born, Staris Shatham. Duke Hende declines to pick a side, instead biding his time, waiting to see what might develop. While he waits, the Duke begins to search for new jade deposits, ostensibly mindful of the potential for war. Said to be in preparation for foreign aggression, in reality, it is simply a front for his ambitions, a means to gain a factional edge. The search for jade deposits will take place in the frontier, a vast swathe of unexplored land. The task of surveying this territory falls to the Blue Foxes. Fred, I think it is better if you stay here while I head for the frontier. You can fulfill the Duke's order without me? Aye. There are still occasional riots here in Central Finn. It would be unwise to conduct a full-scale expedition with things as they are. Must we go at all? Tempers are still running hot after the massacre in the slums. Now would seem a good time to focus on quelling the unrest. Still, I suppose we cannot simply ignore an order from Duke Hende. Indeed. I knew you would understand. And as I said, setting out in force is dangerous. Better that I take a small unit with me. Then have Walter Quinn accompany you. Walter Quinn? Why? Having her here, with the massacre and all, makes me uncomfortable. She makes me uncomfortable. It might also be a good idea to keep her away from Duke Hende for a while. I can't be her babysitter, you know. Iska and I will hold the fort here. Please, Rias. Fine. But you owe me for this one, Fred. Oh, I know it.
do me proud. Ah, <sighs> sorry. Listen. Whatever could it be? To be honest... How about this? How fascinating. <sighs> I can't believe this. So? Your next mission will be an expedition to the frontier. You are tasked with locating jade deposits and securing them with all possible haste. A sorcerium rich river has been sighted near Bearfess Cataract in the east of the frontier. It is believed that there is a plentitude of jade to be found in proximity to this area. However, the frontier is the only unexplored part of Deofield Island. Powerful monsters and demi-humans have been seen there making this a very dangerous mission. Walter Quinn and I will undertake this expedition. We are well versed in both ancient sorcery and jade. Iska, you and I will remain stationed at our posts in Central Field. The Kingdom's magickers have sufficient supply already. What is the point in stockpiling it? The reason is simple. It is better that we acquire it before the Empire or the Alliance claim it for their own. While I understand that the instability in Central Field may suggest that we have more pressing priorities, Dukende seems very set on securing this crucial resource. How strange. I wonder what dastardly scheme he has in mind. Enough speculation. Look sharp. We have an expedition to prepare for. Oh, indeed. And I expect to be properly escorted. We're counting on you, Rias. We'll take care of it. This is it. Bayafes Cataract. Last, we have been on this expedition for over a month. I was thinking I would die of boredom. You were amused enough on the road, killing monsters, gawping at natural disasters. It sounds as though you couldn't keep your eyes off me. With all the noise you were making, I couldn't avoid it, even if I tried. If you say so. Now, have we found the jade or what? Not yet. And we have company. I know I'm a terrible distraction, but do try to keep your eyes on the enemy. The beasts in the frontier are ferocious and numerous. We mustn't underestimate them. The place pulses with the power of jade. There are doubtless new veins here lying undiscovered. Perhaps we should start by investigating that hill. Shouldn't we eliminate the danger first? It will be 
I'm always happy to do the dirty work, you know.
understand. Singing you, eh? Yes, yes. Let us be off. I understand. Really my style. Everyone, all together now. Enemy unit defeated. Shall I go that way then? This is the spot. Done and dusted.
Here goes. Go that way then. Eradicate them. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. Let us be off. On my way.
Target eliminated. You've got a little sting in you, eh? Yes, yes. Let us be off. Shall I go that way, then? Go that way then. I'll show you what I can do. Be gone with you. Yes, let us be off. On my way. What good is a captured wyvern to us? What will we do with it? Take it with us. Wait, you're not thinking of riding it, are you? Don't be so quick to draw conclusions. I won't be mounting any wyverns today. All anyway, the important thing is that we've spotted the vein of jade. In fact, that hill itself looks to be the remnants of an augus. See those stakes? It'd certainly fetch a good price, wouldn't it? Oh, we could make weapons out of it. That would be... Yes. I suppose it would, in a sense. <laughs> You're going to keep this to yourself, aren't you? <sighs> well, Walter Quinn. I'm afraid our trip has finally come to an end. A shame, isn't it? No, it really is.
One month has passed since Andreas and Walter Quinn set forth for the frontier. Frederick and Iscarion, who stayed behind in Central Field, attempt to prevent further rioting before chaos unfurls. Alas, these efforts are mostly unsuccessful. The riots continue, largely unabated. In an attempt to calm the situation, Iscarion seeks to cooperate with the democratic activists. To this end, he pays a secret visit to the Consulate of Porand, the one democratic member of the Alliance. Greetings. My name is Iscarion Colchester. Well, well. A visit from one of the fabled Blue Foxes. I am Nicodemo Amon, representative of the Porand Consulate. Tremina Umbert, daughter of a Southfield merchant. Do you speak for the activists? You can think of me as one of them. Here is what I would like to know. To what ends do you seek to spread democracy? Surely you know what has become of the ordinary people of my area. Because of a certain central field noble, people were chased from their homes. To those who stayed, clung to the shining light of democracy. I knew I had to stand alongside them. Do you despise Duke Hende? Do you despise us? I bear no grudges. I question only the kingdom's system of rule. If I may, Iscarion, could you please enlighten me as to why you sought Tremina out? I wished it known that I do not think ill of democracy. My only concern is keeping the peace. The rioters abuse the ideology. They take up the mantle of democracy out of convenience. If the anger of the mob were quelled, a rational discussion could be held, I'm sure of it. I have no desire to hurt common folk. But if they are... Is that a threat? I came here to forestall military action. Can you not convince the people to stand down? My words alone would not calm the situation. The Blue Foxes would have to withdraw. If you sincerely wish to avoid bloodshed, then your entreaties should be to the royal government. The people will not abandon their cause until they believe themselves on an equal footing. I fear that what you propose will prove difficult. But I am also aware of the need for action. I will relay our discussions to my unit. In the meantime, please let the people know that I will do my best for their cause. Mm -hmm. Your mission is to suppress the radicalized democratic activists in the capital. Rioters have gathered in the slums. Vandalizing and looting are rife. Rioters again? Yes, but there is a difference this time. 
They are acting on the behest of a single agitator. His name is Galvin Yohava. He's fanning the flames and causing the riots to grow fiercer by the day. We have received orders from Duke Hende to capture Yohavo with all possible haste. Good. And we shall also ensure that the insolence of the Democrats is suitably punished. Fred, please listen. Looting and violence are not inevitable byproducts of democratic activism. Look, I spoke with their representative. They seem amenable to negotiate. So long as... We temporarily withdraw. We will not negotiate with the rioters ringleader. It's imperative we suppress them at once. They... They have simply allowed their rancor to get the better of them. Let us cease this one-sided oppression. Iska, what has got into you? You ought to know the danger posed by the ideology of democracy. A nation requires a monarch to lead it. And if that monarch is incompetent, what becomes of us then? A king is a king. If they sit upon the throne, they must be obeyed. Gentlemen, please. Time is of the essence. Please make haste to Rivingale Docktown. Iska, we'll speak no more of this. <sighs> There's the storehouse. That's where the greedy nobles have squirreled away our hard-earned coin. Ah. Galvin, what is the meaning of this? You... I'll hear none of it, Tremina. Not from the daughter of a wealthy Southfield trader. Now is the time for the people to take back the reins of power. You cannot understand our plight. Violence will solve nothing, Galvin. You're just enriching yourself behind the guise of democracy. Well, feel free to explain that to these people. But I doubt that any would pay you any mind. This is the true face of democracy. Simple thievery and barbarism. Nothing more. Please, Fred, give me a little more time. I would like to speak to their representative. Wake yourself from your idealism. This is naught but a riot. And what of us? Know we not any solution beyond violence? Enough of this. We deploy. Taste my heel!
Understood. Here I go. Really my style. Moving out. Seize victory! Deploying for battle. Moving out. Very well. This will do. Unit has been eliminated. Very well. Here I come. Push four.
moving out. The enemy has been eliminated. On route. Get out of the way, loyalist scum. You've no idea how much we've suffered. What drivel. You think your hardship earns you the right to rise up against your king? Give us back our money! There's no reasoning with them. Let's hurry up and put them out of their misery. <sighs> Moving out. for battle. Ugh! In a tight spot here! for battle. Here I come! Push forward. Everyone! 
everyone! All together now! together and cut you down what an unruly rabble Ever Fred please and then what am I to sit on my hands while they loot and plunder with abandon of course not but if we were to talk to them you're delusional if you think they'll listen our mission is to secure this area nothing more my style. Moving into position. Anymore. 
Moving out. Everyone, hold the line. With me now. you the fruits of experience. for battle. En route! Yes, all you guys! Oh, There's a spot here! for battle. So, you're Galvin Yohavo, eh? You'll get your dues for it. Uh, you blue foxes. You're naught but lapdogs of the nobles. What honor have you left? Hmm? Take him away. Aye, sir. But Fred. <laughs> The Blue Foxes suppress the violence in Rivengale and capture the instigator, Galvin Yohavo. A few days later, however, Yohavo escapes from his cell near Elm Camp in Central Field. It is presumed that Democratic sympathizers aided his escape, though the truth is still unknown. Upon returning to Central Field some days later, the Blue Foxes meet Tremina Umbert at Elm Camp, where she informs them that she wants to join the unit. She claims to be dismayed by the activists' behavior 
and offers to aid in suppressing their destructive actions. Iscarion acceded to her request without the slightest hesitation. Frederick initially refused to let Tremina join the Blue Foxes, but eventually gave in to Iscarion's insistence. Upon return, Andreas and Walter Quinn report to Duke Hende. They give him a false account, claiming not to have found any jade near Beerfess Cataract. The Duke is immediately dubious of this claim, and orders that the Blue Fox's property be searched. Andreas has kept the jade well hidden, however, and the Duke's men come back empty-handed. Meanwhile, Frederick and Iscarion are given orders to suppress the pro-democracy riots in Rivengale. Their experiences lead to the two men having very different opinions of the democratic cause. The Blue Fox leaders, Frederick, Walter Quinn, Iscarion, and Andreas, reunite after several months apart, just as their divergent desires are becoming apparent, Estalt appears, bearing a letter. In it are laid bare the deepest inner workings of the Granvelle Church. Have you seen this? Catherine's asking for our help. Yes. I've already read it. The three of you ought to do the same. Though I must warn you, its contents are absolutely vile. She must be in some danger to turn to us. Has she stumbled upon some dark secret of the church? I dread to think what that letter might contain. What should we do, Fred? We move fast. Let's make our preparations and get ready to depart. <laughs> 